Hey, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to finally Friday. Got the weekend upon us. It is your Earth Master right here on this side of the microphone. February 9th, 2024. It's about 9.18 a.m. here, California time. And uh, latest activity here on the globe for earthquake activity shows a 3.6 here across the region of the Java Trench. We'll get to earthquake activity here in just a little bit, but we did have a rather large flare happen here within the last couple hours or so a x 3.3 event coming off of a far side sunspot region with uh, no earth directed component unfortunately for those that uh, were looking for some auroras in the forecast unlikely though from this event either way it was the uh, second strongest solar flare of the current solar cycle uh, again that happened uh, just on the southwestern side of the sun i pulled up the uh, latest imagery here uh, and it was a beauty unfortunately that sunspot had uh, been way over there it's, can't even see it uh, but uh, we did see the x flare and we're feeling the effects of the x flare here in the ionosphere with uh, a lot of protons being shot off towards the earth regardless from this large flare and a little bit of uh, radio blackout being observed across the sunlit side of the earth. This should uh, probably linger here throughout the day as far as the protons uh, having uh, an effect there on the ionosphere. But again, no earth directed component from the CME, which uh, I'm pretty certain was fairly massive here. Uh, we'll have to wait for the uh, latest imagery from the, uh, from the folks that uh, cover this and put out the updates but uh, we are getting that radiation storm uh, kicking up as of right now so that was from a sunspot number 3575 again that one is way out of sight out of mind that's not even 35 this isn't the sunspot that uh, produced that x flare it was even further out here on the far side of the sun but you've seen how bright it was seen how powerful it was you know just from uh even from the earth directed view here beautiful image of that flare looks like about the same time we did see a little bit of flaring from another large sunspot region which is currently facing the earth and it does have uh, quite a bit of complexity here within the center uh, portion of this core of the sunspot we'll watch this one because anything that does pop off from here will be almost certainly earth directed uh, as it is a looking at us squarely directly with a bullseye shot towards the earth if anything does blast off so we'll keep that in mind in terms of uh, potential aurora forecast uh, overall threat right now 99 percent chance for a c flare m flare at 60 and uh, x flare still remains elevated around 25 percent let's see uh kevin captured a beautiful image there of the x 3.3 earlier this morning like i say it popped off here about uh yeah, about four hours or so ago now all right, uh, what else we got here for earthquake activity? Or uh, let's go ahead and start off with, um, well, the latest update here on Iceland. There's not a whole lot going on currently. In fact, uh, let's go ahead and pull up the latest uh, webcam imagery there from that region. i got to go over here to the site called Live from Iceland that has all the uh, webcams there to monitor the, um, well, the lack of activity right now. Looks like uh, we are currently away from uh, any eruptive activity. Doesn't look like anything's occurring out there. As you can see out across the lava field there, things have uh, cooled down slightly. And uh, no visible eruptive activity across Iceland today. Daylight out there. Here's your latest update from the Icelandic Met Office showing no signs of eruptive activity. So, they did put out a new update here uh, in terms of a hazard map. Looks like um, they've kept Zone 3 here in an area uh, that could see. Let's zoom in a little bit and see what we can see here. And bring this down just a tad bit. Um, let's see what we got. Okay. So, Grindavik area down here still in Zone 4, sinkholes and fault movement. Uh, zone 3 is about the main area here where we could see some eruptive fissure activity without warning. That's going to be the region here just south. It looks like um, 
south of uh, yesterday's current activity there's the fish activity from february 8th that red line here and of course the lava flows that are extending from that fissure uh, which of course have not now um, halted but of course they will stay a little warm for a while um, that got pretty close here to the Savart Singi area power plant, but there is a berm around this region here. Didn't quite get into the berm area, uh, but it looks like that did go over some roads and uh, I believe a water pipeline as well. Uh, the area up north, Zone 2, looks to be uh, in the area as well in terms of hazard, eruptive fisher activity without warning. Um, so we'll continue to watch this as we move on to the next phase here of what could take place, right? It seems to be a little 30 day interval between earthquakes. Um, the question is, is this going to continue roughly in the same area or are we going to see maybe some activity open up here across the Greenovic area next? Uh, and that's, uh, it's a possibility as we look at the, um, overlay here of the region of Greenovic. Uh, you can see that magma filled intrusion area extending underneath the region where we're seeing that activity right now but also it had traveled underneath the green Devic region uh, so a couple different possibilities and scenarios here uh, that we could see things uh, solidify over here and we'll continue to see magma intrusion which would uh, eventually fill up this area across the green Devic area once again and that could open up some fissure activity uh, along this region here and even possibly offshore we'll have to watch this and see how this plays out in terms of the next phase here uh, and whether we get a return of uh, inflation activity uh, taking a look at the uh, activity here today of course you know it just just stopped in terms of the eruptive activity across Grindavik there is the deflation event um, right now it looks like it is a little on the level side or at least going down that's expected right with the uh, depletion of magma below again we'll watch that and uh, see how the uh, following weeks play out all right uh earthquake activity let's go ahead and see what we got we did have some larger movement overnight including a six pointer down here across the kermadec islands new zealand area we have been noticing a little bit of smaller quake activity here over the last week or so including some movement there across new zealand uh, but this six-pointer uh, coming up, uh, fairly large earthquake. But this area does see quite a bit of sixes and even larger earthquakes um, throughout time here, throughout history. So we'll continue to watch this. Uh, a lot of deeper activity quakes here up north along the Fiji Islands region here overnight, including that 5.3. Uh, this one, look at that, almost 600 kilometers deep for a 4.5. Uh, just about midnight and that's here into the uh, Tonga Trench area. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, let me give a quick glance here at the uh, <clears throat> New Zealand area and see what we got going on. Uh, Geonet is the folks for that or New Zealand Quakes. All right, um, doesn't look like anything as far as any major activity being reported. Most of this here is from uh, uh, New Zealand's time frame yesterday. But I do want to check some earthquake drums and kind of see what that six pointer looked like this morning. There it is. Uh, fairly close to this station here, I guess. That looks like that's the closest station. That's going to be the six pointer showing up here fairly nicely across the board. Of course, the further you get away from that earthquake, uh, the less that it uh, shows on the graph right here. Uh, looks like there was a, maybe a three-pointer here local to the North Island area uh, just before that earthquake. It's going to be this quake right here on the graph. Uh, but aside from that, um, let's see what else we got. Some smaller quake activity, but it doesn't look like there's anything uh, to write home to Grandma about. All right. Western Pacific here looks fairly quiet. A little bit of earthquake activity, though, across the Japan region. There's an activity stirring up here across the Java Trench. Uh, let's see here. Definitely, I, you know, with this uh, deeper movement quake activity out here, once again, got to watch the regions upstream. I think we've seen a little bit of uh, 
meaning of what I'm trying to say here in terms of the deeper activity triggering stress quakes upstream here along the plate boundary. Um, definitely keep an eye on New Zealand. It looks like it has been wanting to move recently with a couple threes, but we just haven't really seen any large quake activity here recently. But uh, things could be pointing towards that with activity away from the plate boundary. Did have some movement here in Australia overnight as well. Um, that 4.5 though, I believe is from a couple days ago. I'm not for sure why it's still showing up on the map. We'll get uh, last 24 hours on there. There we go. Uh, they did see a 3.2 and a 2.6 within that same region there where that four pointer struck uh, a day or so ago. So overall looks like activity may be wanting to kick up down here with this type of movement. Keep an eye on that. Um, up around Japan, smaller quake activity. Of course, Hawaii see what's going on out here in the Hawaii Islands area. Uh, most of the movement here what we got going on here. A lot of shallow earthquake activity. This is kind of what I was pointing at earlier um, in the week, right about the time that the activity died down here. Uh, we've seen that uh, magma flow move from the southwest rift zone down to this area, kind of towards the seamount region out here. Uh, and this is very shallow earthquake activity across the area. I know that's got to do with the magma uh, stirring up below the area. Let's uh, see what's going on there this morning, if they have any updates put out yet. It's kind of early their time, so uh, more than likely there's no update put out. But I uh, just want to double check. Um, yeah, this was put out yesterday here. So they just kind of stated about the same thing. Um, you know, the earthquakes are decreasing and everything's going back to normal. Deflationary trends are occurring, but uh, I still think that there's something going on there because there was a lot of magma that has been displaced uh, from the summit region. The question is, you know, what's going to become of it? Obviously, we know where it's going because it uh, moved off here from the southwest rift zone even further into this area down here where we're seeing uh, a lot of that earthquake activity. So far as, let me bring up a uh, seismograph station here too. Something, they definitely redid this, this site. I can't say I'm uh, happy about it. I guess I'll just have to get used to it here. It just seems a little bit different. Uh, earthquake activity definitely looks like things have calmed down there around this region. Uh, but I want to see if this station's working. That is not working there. Um, and I wish we had some tilt meters out here. That would give us a good indicator what's rolling around below the surface here. Uh, there's some of the other earthquake activity out here today. And again, that's very shallow earthquake movement. Um, not seeing any major, major swarm activity out here. But uh, definitely stirring something up out here across the uh, area off the southwest rift zone and further south. Uh, tilt meters, of course, there's no tilt meters. And they're mostly all up here where... You know, the magma has been displaced from the region, so it's not going to show us or help us out much. Um, but uh, I guess we'll have to continue to watch that and see where it goes and what happens next there across that volcano. But for now, things are just, they're kind of stable. All right, uh, across California area. Let's see if we've got anything going on since last night. Covered 2.5 and above. Uh, looks like we had a 2.9, another earthquake up here about 2 o'clock this morning. I say another earthquake because this area has been uh, seen a little bit of earthquake activity, somewhat deeper here into the subduction zone of the Cascadia uh, subduction zone here. This 2.9 coming in about 11 kilometers deep, but just off of the plate boundary uh, along this little ridge, oceanic ridge there. So we'll continue to watch that. Uh, we have seen a little bit of tremor activity down into the southern end of the Cascadia underneath this area and uh, it seems as though any type of tremor that occurs down here triggers uh, stress related earthquakes upstream so that could be a bad sign in terms of the uh, uh, built up strain across the Cascadia there uh, further out and about let's see anything major going on out here still seeing uh, still seeing some swarming out here in the Gulf of California uh, what see how many quakes that makes us now a little bit there's been a little bit more than this about eight earthquakes on the USGS map but the EMSC model uh, probably 
showing a little bit more of that uh, as far as the multitudes go if we were to bring this back more but uh, either way we'll keep an eye on that region showing some elevated movement out there across these uh, fracture zones there in the Gulf of California not a whole lot across the rest of the country quick glance here at uh, Yellowstone National Park here super volcano pretty quiet conditions for now not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity a little small amount here around Mary Lake a couple small specks of an earthquake but aside from that uh, things look fairly decent out here uh, weather outlook here today let's go ahead and check this out real quick shows uh, as current day one out here pretty large region of marginal risk for two percent zone of tornado probability wind and uh, looks like some hail threats out there as well so keep your eyes to the sky it is getting close to that time of year springtime coming upon us uh, and the severe weather risk should be um, higher uh, in terms of the area around the southern plains as we head into the springtime we'll get into that a little bit later with uh, the return of la nina but i think we're going to go into a neutral phase first before we hit into the la nina we'll discuss that a little bit uh, later in an, in an update as um, far as weather patterns go here still looking at the return of wet weather out along the california region there some of it's backing off a little bit these storms are not looking all that strong compared to the last couple model runs but uh, either way the pattern still shows wet systems hitting the west coast here beginning about the 15th of february around uh looks like valentine's day there this is utc time so we're looking at valentine's day uh, maybe northern california getting some uh some rain and then it just kind of continues after that we'll have to see how that plays out all right folks i'm out of here um keep your eye on the sky and um yeah, we'll keep an eye on this sunspot region here that's currently facing us. That's just quite the X flare. Had that been uh, Earth directed within position of the current large sunspot that's looking at Earth, we would be talking about a uh, beautiful, I'm sure, uh, aurora storm, aurora activity um, in in the next couple days or so. But uh, unfortunately, that was directed away from Earth, and um, uh, well hopefully we can change that with maybe uh, a large flare popping off from the current sunspot region that is facing us and um, we'll get some greenery up in the sky i would love to see some auroras down here in northern california but that would take a huge event which is possible it's happened before just got to be at the right place at the right time and uh, all right we're out of here folks we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later on this evening enjoy your friday i got a busy schedule on my plate we'll catch you guys a little bit later take care